Poke the Bear is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNX Media Network. And welcome into Poke the Bear, episode 138, presented by FanDuel. I'm Evan Marinovsky. That's Connor Ryan. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Um, during uh, the first round games on Thursday, the Bruins played the Winnipeg Jets, beat them 3-0. And Jacob Lauko, finally, first game in two weeks, brought out. He's like, just, you know, and he, he has fun with it on Twitter, right? He, you know, just going back and forth. The, the Grandpa Simpson meme of walking in and doing a circle in the foyer and then walking out. That's basically been Jacob Lauko for the past couple of weeks uh, with the Bruins. But he played against the Winnipeg Jets on Thursday and played well. You, I think it was you uh, who posted the video, or it might have been uh, Mr. Tenkrat <laughs> posted the video of a really good shift from uh, Jakob Lauko. Um, and he was good. And I think you're seeing there's some NHL upside there with him. Yeah, and I think that's been the case for most of the season. Again, he hasn't really been given uh, an extended stretch of time up in the NHL ranks, but when he's been called up, I mean, you even look at it back earlier in, in March when he had that first game, I think, in – Two weeks, he goes in against the Sabres, scores two goals, doesn't play for two weeks, then comes back in this game against Winnipeg. And again, even though he didn't have a point against Winnipeg, uh, only played about six minutes of ice time, which is more, I think, a byproduct of the fact that there's a lot of, uh, you know, special teams, uh, four and four, those kind of things going on. But in that limited amount of time, he led the team in individual scoring chances. Like he was around, he was around the puck, around great AIs. ice. Um, and he's kind of, you know, he has that mentality of a fourth line grinder in terms of, you know, trying to, um, you know, get into the dirty areas of the ice, you know, mixing up after the play. But also I think he has that natural speed and acceleration that other fourth line guys don't have where, whether it's uh, winning, uh, you know, races to the puck, uh, kind of making something out of nothing by driving to the net. Like there's a couple of times where I think he even caught a guy like Hellebuck off guard in terms of just how quickly he was able to scoop up the puck bring it down low and either get a shot off or at least, you know, create a little bit of havoc whenever he's around there. So again, I don't think this is a guy that you're going to roll him out for the next five, six games. He's going to score like four goals and, and something like that. But I, I think at the very <laughs> least, you look at a guy like Lauko who um, at one point was kind of viewed as this like fringe, like, is he a pretty solid AHL guy, but a guy who's not good enough to crack the NHL. I think he's right in that mix where if you're looking at, for the rest of the season, um, that vacancy on that fourth line, you know, you have to imagine it's Hathaway, no sick, not moving those guys, but between him and Greer, it seems like it can go really back and forth. And if those two guys are competing for minutes and the way they both play, that should probably get the most out of them. If they're kind of fighting, uh, you know, game in and game out. And it's like on defense with, uh, with um, Grizzly, Forbert and Clifton, in the sense that both of them bring different elements, right? Greer plays a little <clears> bit of a different game than Jacob Lauko. And like, I think that's a good thing. You can kind of roll them out based on matchups, based on what you need. Lauko brings, you know, a lot of that speed. Greer just kind of hits it, you know, hits a lot and plays with a lot of intensity, things like that. So, and also I think Lauko could be a guy potentially down the road next year that you do need and do use. Um, and he's kind of proven, you know, molding into a guy you can move around the bottom six if you'd like. Now, is he going to be a top six guy? No, they have quite enough depth uh, on the wings on this team, but they really don't need that. Um, now Lauko does love to use Twitter. So there is that element of it. He does. He does, he does he love his on Twitter. Yes, he is always online. Um, but it is, it, again, it's also a good thing to have in the playoffs to have him, you know, if someone goes down, if someone gets injured, you need someone to step in for a game. He can do that and kind of provide you that buzz. And I think that's a really good place to be uh, with a guy like Jacob Lauko. Now on defense, the depth was impacted on Thursday night. Uh, Derek Forbert did the normal Derek Forbert thing blocked a shot left the game in a walking boot because that Winnipeg arena is so weird. I had to sit on the bench for quite a while, uh, you know, sitting in pain Uh, as you tweeted, like the Chris, like Chris Wagner in 2019 after he was it his wrist or his arm. I think it was, I think it was his wrist. I want to say, but absolutely shattered it. Yeah. And had to sit on the bench and like, wait, (laughs) which is, I've never understood why an NHL arena has that where teams can't just go like, the tunnel doesn't lead right to the bench. They have to, you know, or I always love when the backup goalie has to sit like in a different spot 
Like I think Montreal yes. might be like this, or it's not Montreal. It's um the Islanders used to be that way, where the goalie would yeah. have to sit down in the it'd corner. Be, they, they would cut to like the Bruins scoring a goal, and it'd be like Anton Hudobin like up against the glass, <laughs> like and just having to get chirped by like opposing fans the whole yes, game. Yes, of course. So... I wouldn't. I wouldn't chirp at Hudobin. No, you can't chirp Hudobin. Hudobin's a national treasure. There's no reason yes. to do that. Um, but Forbert left the game in a walking boot. Um, Jim Montgomery said won't play the rest of the trip. Not great news because again, this is a guy you really don't want to lose. I know we've said you know they have depth back there, but this is a big loss. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the, the Bruins do have the depth to at least have guys step in. I mean, right now you still have probably a six man unit that you can roll out there. Uh, Jim Montgomery also said they like to get Jakob Zaboral in a couple of games, so I would I would imagine he kind of joins that rotation if they want to keep on cycling guys in and out. But as you said, it, it's tough because I think we've already touched on this before. And I don't think it's really changed. Uh, there haven't been a lot of answers, I think, yet with this um, defensive rotation in terms of, all right, there's one guy who is planting himself that he's not coming out of the lineup. Um, there's not a guy who's, I think, like dipped enough that um, they're like, all right, this guy is absolutely going to be the seventh in the playoffs. But forward's a guy that, you know, five on five, we kind of know he's not maybe the best in terms of what he brings, but it's tough to overlook the PK uh, numbers, right? Like even after, you know, he didn't have a very good game against Chicago. Granted, I don't think a lot of guys did forward, but he's been right back out there and he showed his value in that game against uh, Winnipeg, as you said. I mean, he gets hurt blocking the shot, but the Bruins were five for five on the PK through those first uh, 40 minutes when he was out there. I think Ty Anderson kind of brought it up uh, even before that game. Bruins PK with forward in the lineup, 88%. Pretty good. Without Fulbert in the lineup, seventy six point five, but thirty nine for fifty one, which again, it's pretty it's pretty notable drop for a PK. You know that's been really good all year. Um, and again, when you get into the playoffs and it's a situation where a seven game series can be decided by a goal or two, that's where a guy like Fulbert does you know showcase his value. So even though he's not exactly a guy that five on five you're the most confident in, it's also tough to overlook the things that he brings, whether it's blocking shots, PK, some of that dirty work that. Um, you know, other guys would ideally not like to do on a day-to-day basis. Fulbert kind of embraces that role. So um, if he misses time, it's a tough hit. But again, hopefully he's at least healthy enough to come back right around the end of the regular season, if that's the case. Or, you know, at this point, I, I wouldn't rush him back if you're the Bruins. No, because I think, no. I think, they're, I think they're aware of, yes, you know, even though he has flaws in this game, his skill set is something that, if you ask me right now, is he the odd man out of, out of that six-man rotation? I would probably say no. Um, I think it's probably between Clifton and Grizzly, but um, again, even with those flaws, it's really is tough to overlook what he brings in terms of, you know, some really critical areas of the game. And no one uh, played well in that Blackhawks yeah. Bruins game yeah. on Tuesday. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, Forbert brings a serious value. The penalty killing aspect is huge in the playoffs, which we'll get to later in this episode. We're going to touch on a little playoff stuff, which is always fun. Um, long look ahead, but uh, but again, Forbert brings um, some serious value. When we're talking about serious value, though, Connor, our exclusive wagering partner, our good friends at FanDuel. Connor, what can people look forward to from FanDuel? Massachusetts, listen up. The wait is finally over. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is now live in Massachusetts. And new customers in Mass can get in on the action with $200, $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. Finally, you can bet on all your favorite sports from the money line to point spreads to player props and more. Frankly, that's the best part of FanDuel. You can bet on anything. You want to wager how many goals David Pasenak is going to score this season? Go for it. How many dingers Rafael Devers is going to have in 2023? Be my guest. How many TikTok dances Juju smith Chusha is going to post? Hell, it's it's probably there. It's probably it's probably it's gonna be the, somewhere, right? It has probably, to be. <laughs> it's probably on the site. Listen, you can do it all over at FanDuel. No one beats that. So, guys, please listen. Bet now on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss your chance to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com/slash/Boston and make every moment more on America's number one sports book. 21 plus and present in mass first online real money wager only $10 de- first deposit is required bonus issued as non-withdrawable be- bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? 
Hope is here. Go to gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. I will tell you, Connor, using some of those bonus bets on uh, March Madness games, yes, Friday, well, Thursday and Friday. And uh, it makes it even more fun to watch the games when it's not just your bracket on the line, but you know, you're, you're a bet. So it, uh, I did pretty well though. I got to give myself credit. I did well. When, when, so. when Virginia's just eating a ball down the, <laughs> down the, the court, like Jacoby Myers, everyone's like, no, what are you doing? And you're um, like... <laughs> thank God. Um, anyways, go do uh, all of that. One thing that people did a lot of over the past week or so, a lot of people were not, a lot of people overreacted to the Bruins. Losing streak and, I, and I get what? it. I will say this. I get it. I do understand it. There's not been a lot this year, right? That, that, that there's not been a lot of losing streaks. There's been barely any at all. Uh, they've been a wagon. So yeah, I mean, they, they play like crap against Chicago. I understand people get kind of worried. Power plays dried up. I get that too. That's a whole nother thing. We talked about a Bruins beat already though on Monday. Um, but they go out against Winnipeg and they look good. They finish off the job. Nice workman, three nothing win. Um, and again, I think I, I get, I understand it, but people really were overreacting pretty hard um, about those losses. Again, and they weren't good losses either. These, yes. you know, these were not good. I'm not saying it's good, but some of the reaction I saw on Twitter and and different places, uh, people kind of thought the sky was falling. Yes, uh, I think that's probably one of byproduct of the fact this team has just only had 11 regulation losses all year. So when you do have <laughs> games like that, um, especially when like Chicago, they were just straight up like put on the ropes. Like that Arizona loss in Arizona where it had that weird icing call that like messed things up. That was when we're like, ah, shit happens, right? Like Chicago is like do? just straight up. Yeah, straight up they got pants in that game against a very bad Chicago team. Um, oh my God. I mean, if you if yeah. you stop someone on the street and ask them to name like three players in that Chicago top six – they're not getting it. Yeah. What was that you yeah, yeah, back in the day? It was like, um, where they would Bruin? stop. No, oh, they would stop oh. people and ask them like uh, trivia questions. It was oh, right. by the guy Fitzy. I forget the name of the yes. show. Oh. But that if it was that show and they did about, about Chicago and the Blackhawks right now, people would win no money. Yeah, there'd be zero money. To was it that. pocket no, money? Was that it? Pocket that, money. That's what it was. Yeah, it was pocket money. I thought so. you were talking about the the classic Nesson uh, series socks appeal. Never, never socks, appeal. socks appeal. Yes, but, that was anyway. all time. Yes. Anyway, as as we get back on track here, um, it, it is one of those things where, you know, those losses, I think, where they've been so few and far between, I think people tend to over-exaggerate maybe the, the issues. And again, as you said, like bad losses, and I think it has been a concerning trend, even like that home win against Detroit wasn't really a good game. Like, even this Winnipeg game, there were a lot of pockets where they really could have stomped Winnipeg out and really didn't. So again, I think the most important thing is just them getting back to their details and finding their game. But it's just encouraging that, you know, going in to Winnipeg against a team that uh, was in the playoff picture all year. Now they're kind of slipping and getting very desperate. Really good goaltender and, and hell of luck. Um, that could have been a, a, a tough game for the Bruins that are already kind of uh, trending downward over this last week and come back with a pretty professional, all things considered, 3 nothing win. So this point, um, again, you don't – I think one thing that, that impacts in terms of probably stoking the flames of people getting worried is the the lightning, right? In terms of, I think everyone just looked at how great that team was and how it went to shit very quickly and how awful it was. And they just don't <laughs> want to, you know, be part of that, which understandable. Um, I understand I, that I, too. Yeah. You don't want to be there. Yes, I, I get but, that. But um, yeah, I, I think it's just something where for the Bruins, as long as they're, again, it, it's tricky because, you want to make sure you're not losing those details, but also you have to be cognizant of, you know, things like rest, things like, you know, sorting out the lineup, other things that are probably more important than, uh, you know, knocking down a, a tomato can opponent or something like that. Even if they have another one or two losses that are like, uh, like as long as I think they perform well against some of these very few remaining uh, big matchups, Toronto, Carolina, even though Carolina also sucks because that's also the second leg of a back-to-back against Tampa, which, again, please can the Bruins play Carolina not on a back-to-back? Just like, a regular and, game at a regular yeah, and, time, and course, not like, like 5 p.m. or anything, like a regular yeah. time. So if they perform well in, in games like that, even though they are in a little bit of an uphill climb in terms of the schedule, um, I think that's the, the biggest determinant. The rest of it, whether it's them resting guys, it's all part of the process in terms of, of what they want to be before the playoffs. So. Um, Again, you don't want these habits that have you know spread it up. Whether it's deferring shots, being too selective with shots, uh, 
breakaways, uh, the goaltending slipping a little bit. Of course, you want to iron those things out. But again, we still have pretty much a month to go before the regular season ends. There's plenty of time right now. And if the Bruins are sorting out these kind of bumps in the road now, as opposed to April 14th, and they've lost three in a row, and people are like, (laughs) oh, uh, this is a much down three nothing in the first round. That would be very yeah, fun. Yeah, I think people exactly. would get, people would react very normal to that. I would think. I think um, the the comments on our stuff would be very interesting. But yeah, again, they have they have time to sort things out. And again, beating Winnipeg on the road, a nice bounce back performance from them. I think they can beat any team. My biggest thing is, you know, can they figure out the power play? I think that's my biggest kind of um, focus over the next you know rest of the season is can they just figure the power play out? That's the biggest thing. I, I don't look at you know i mean if they can beat tampa and carolina terrific that's awesome um but my biggest thing is you know can you figure that power play out that's really the one hole on this team and most importantly connor can you please get to the first round healthy can you just limit the amount of damage that is done to this roster come early to mid april that's the biggest thing and speaking of early to mid april connor let's look ahead Let's look ahead. Uh, Bruins most likely, no doubt, are going to be the number one seed in the Atlantic. They're going to play a wild card team. Uh, let's pick. Who would you want the Bruins to play in round one as of now? Uh, yeah, I think right now, if you want to do like pure entertainment value, I'm going to go with uh, the Florida Panthers. I, I was debating like Buffalo, you know, their their defense is kind of because that Terrible. would be a fun place. That'd be a, a very fun arena. And like those fans are diehard and like it'd be great to see them take that step. But I feel like there's still maybe one more year away. They got to fix that goaltending situation, which I think Devin Levi uh, is might be signing with them very, very soon out of Northeastern. So that helps them out. Anyway, Buffalo, they're they're on their way up, but I'll go with Florida. And that's not just because I want to go to the beach because I think that is just <laughs> such a chaotic lucky, matchup. I mean, lucky yeah. if that's the case. Yeah. Jealous. Um, but yeah, I think Florida is a team that, you know, it's fun to, fun to watch them play when they're playing well, which has not really been the case that much this year, but if you want like a match of like, you look at these other teams that are sitting around that second wild card spot, like the Islanders. That's one that Bruins should win, but got a good goalie. Like they they play a structured, annoying kind of style of play. Boring that, you know, series, boring yeah. team. Like if, if uh, Florida somehow gets in uh, and clinches that second wild card spot, that has the 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 chances of the Bruins just winning that in four or five games and just like potting four or five goals a game, right? Like that defense is not very good. Uh, that loss of Uyghur has been huge for them. They can score uh, Florida, like especially when they're, you know, playing at their their highest levels. But they, that matches up well against, I think, a team like Bruins that are based on good goaltending structured defense. Um, again, it's all about, I think, finding that that easier matchup, which again, it's it's the NHL playoffs. Like, I guess there is no easy matchup, but you'd rather them – go through a series against a team that likes to trade chances like Florida as opposed to an Islanders or something like that. Well, and, and you have the Matthew Kachuk thing too. That would be a whole, I mean, yes. imagine, you know, Hathaway and, and um, Bertuzzi and Greer and Marshand against Kachuk. That would be quite a series. I also think Florida is just more of an exciting team. Um, I was saying to you and Ty Anderson last night, like you go, think back to the beginning of the year, there were a lot of people who said the Bruins were not going to be in the playoffs. And what's funny is I feel like everyone, a lot of people missed on the Panthers because we were all saying like, that's, that team lost a lot. Like that defensively, they're not that great in net. They're very shaky. Like that's, you know, they were a wagon last year because a lot of guys overperformed, but they lost a lot of guys off that roster and they overperformed. They, they, yeah. you know, they were not, they, they, they shot up. like, they shot like 41% as a team. That's a lie, but like, it's literally, it was an absurd <laughs> like shooting percentage they have. Yeah. Like, it, it, it made no crazy. sense. Who was the guy who went to Dallas? Uh, who was uh, the third liner? And I'm blanking on his name. Uh, but he, uh, uh, who was it? We're not editing this out. We're leaving this yeah. in, but it was Marchment. someone that Marchman. It was Mason Marchman. Yeah. Mason Marchment, um, who you, I remember advocating for like, Hey, the Bruins should like, you know, think about him as a depth scorer, um, you know, prior to getting Zaka. And he was a guy who, you know, overperformed in Florida last year. I don't know how he's doing this year, but um, again, I actually don't think he's doing too hot, but anyway, le- legitimate piece last show that they lost. Cause he was an important part of that team um, last year. My team, I'm gonna go with Pittsburgh. Give me Pittsburgh. That's an exciting matchup. Crosby Malkin I know they're not that good this year there's a lot of calls to fire um Ron Hextall there's a lot going on there uh that's a team that is really heading on the downturn I just think it'd be cool that if this is Bergeron and Krejci's last run they get one last you know opportunity to beat up on the Penguins like I think it would just be a story but I said at the beginning of the year it's gonna be a storybook 
route through the playoffs and through the season. So far, it has been. So I'm going to stick with that prediction. I think a storybook ending would be beating Pittsburgh in the first round. I know the Pittsburgh Penguins have not been like a thorn in the Bruins side ever um, in the playoffs, but I just think it'd be cool. One last time, Bergeron Crosby. I think it'd be awesome. Cool series. Um, Not huge on they're playing net. I don't think they're that great, you know, overall. Uh, Buffalo is an interesting one, though, I will say, because Buffalo, this is going back on history, but remember in 2010 when they weren't the number one seed, but the Sabres were the three seed, I think, and the Bruins were the six seed, and the Bruins <laughs> upset them? Can't give the Sabres a chance to get revenge on that. Can't be doing that. That is, that is also true, yeah. So they're going to like, bring out Miroslav Shatan for that game. It's one of those ones where I feel like I'm always like rooting for like Buffalo to get back to relevancy because like the NHL as a whole is better when a team uh, in a city like Buffalo has a really good hockey team because they have a very passionate fan base. But I know as soon as they do like break through that that tier, I know like those fans are just going to be so annoying on like oh. they're going to be like they're going to step right in, which, you know, I welcome it. But uh, again, it'll be very fun when Buffalo is a true playoff hockey city again. But I, I know they're going to be they're going to be testing us, Evan. They're going to well, be I mean, jumping on these YouTube channels. They're going to be. Oh, yes. Yeah. They're going to, when we, when we don't have uh, Darlene as the Norris Trophy winner, we're going to have like a, the rogue guy from like Amherst, New York. It's going to be going after us, but <laughs> no, Tage I appreciate Thompson. passion. No, Tage Thompson is the MVP. We're getting absolutely yes. roasted in the, yes. in the comment section, but, and it's, you know what? And that's, and I, I agree with you on this. That's a good city for, for hockey. The fans are into it. Those playoff games, you go back like to the two thousands, the, those wagon teams with like Vanek and Pominville, like those crowds were nuts. So yes. I am all for them being back in the playoffs. I don't think it'll be this year. It's interesting though. Cause like you have Buffalo, Ottawa and Detroit all kind of on that same upward trajectory. Ottawa kind of has the names, but they, you know, Lord knows what's going to happen there. Buffalo seems like the surest bet. Um, Cause Detroit's still kind of like no goalie there. I don't know. The, yeah. Detroit seems a little farther away. Buffalo seems like they've taken more strides. Between, um, yeah, between Darlene and Power and those guys, like especially if Le- if Levi hits, then they're well on their way. Like they they've got sh- they got should. key pieces everywhere. I don't want to give credit to any Northeastern kid, but yes, he is. He's a very good goaltender. Evan. Very good goalies. By the way, speaking of hockey's playoffs this weekend, are you nervous? Probably never to nervous. You. I'm never nervous. I I know the Terriers are going to pull through. We're not going to again. Unfortunately, the the Bean Paw was not played this year, so the Terriers are not able to dominate once again. Very unfortunate, but you know they're saving up their energy for the hockey's tournament. I'm I'm very confident, and if they lose, if they lose the hockey's tournament, Evan, you can clip this and dunk on me. But it's not going to happen because the BU Terriers are going to win the hockey's championship. Book it. There you go. That's Rick. I got it. That's the receipt. Be always sunny. It's an always sunny like Connor. <laughs> <laughs> the Terriers get eliminated. Our produ- our editor Amit is already produced is already putting this video together as we speak. Uh, but BU will at least. At least they'll be in the tournament. They'll be in the NCAA tournament. So um, that'll at least be good to watch, to watch them uh, fall on the national stage. I mean, win. That's, that's, that's very rude. That's very, very I expect rude. better from a classy UMass. Uh, UMass very alum, classy. But... Very classy. No UMass this year, unfortunately. So I have no one to root for. Um, I have no one to pull for. Merrimack's good story, though. Merrimack's that's a great true. story. So yes. I will. They I also, will they also be, eliminated. Um, they eliminated BC. So this is true. They also did that. And I'm all for, you know, a smaller type school getting some bigger notoriety. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Uh, Connor, what can people look forward to from you over at boston.com? Yeah, we're going to have you covered every step of the way this Bruin season with recaps, columns, features, breakdowns, all that good stuff over at boston.com. Of course, we have you covered on everything happening in Boston sports, whether it's Patriots off season, Red Sox sprint training, Celtics, everything uh, you can find over at boston.com. So please read all of our stuff over there. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore 93. Go do all that. And as always, we're sponsored by FanDuel, our good friends, exclusive wagering partner. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky. Both the very listeners have a great rest of your week. 